Hi everybody, Joe here again and welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you how to build an aquarium stand. A do-it-yourself aquarium stand. Now there's several reasons why you might want to build an aquarium stand and the top three reasons in my opinion are the following. Number one reason is always for me going to be the strength of a do-it-yourself stand as opposed to a store-bought stand. Not to mention the price is much lower to simply build it yourself. The ease of building it is definitely underrated. They're very easy to build. You need a minimal amount of tools, so it's pretty simple and straightforward. I also like the customizability of a do-it-yourself stand. You can basically build whatever you want, however you want, however tall, however short, long, wide, etc. Second most <clears throat> commonly uh, used reason to build your own stand is pretty simple. You might have built or you might own a custom sized aquarium. If you do, you're forced to basically build your own stand for it because the stand's not going to be commonly available. If it is, it's going to be pretty expensive. Another reason, and, and the last reason in my top three to build your own stand, is the ability to make your stand fit in with the rest of the decor of your house. Essentially, having your uh, aquarium almost like a piece of furniture in your home. So those are the top three reasons why you might want to consider building your own stand. Now, before you get started, there's some things you're going to need to know. And a lot of things you're going to need to consider. First of all, you're going to need to consider uh, how tall are you going to need your stand. That's usually depicted by whether or not you're going to be viewing your stand standing up or sitting down. In my case, I'm going to be sitting down a lot when I view this tank stand. And, uh, so it's a very short stand. Something else you need to consider is whether or not you're going to have filtration hidden under the stand. So if you have a canister filter or a sump system of some sort, you need to consider that as well. These two things come into play when you're designing your overall stand. The last thing you're probably going to need to consider is whether or not you're building it inside of a room or outside of a room. What I mean by this is quite simple. If you're building it inside of the room and it's never going to need to come out of that room, then don't worry about how tall you make it. It doesn't necessarily need to fit through a door. But if you're building it outside in a garage or somewhere like that, you're going to, make you're going to need to make sure that your stand can actually fit through your door. So measure your doorways before you build your stand. So all of these things you need to consider before you even move forward with the stand. Now, in this video, I'm going to be going over all the materials uh, and how to specifically build your own aquarium stand. The stand I'm building is, the, the blueprints are basically good for almost any size aquarium, even up to 300 gallons. I've used this exact plan to build a stand for a 300 gallon tank before, and it worked very well. Anything after that, you're going to need to get into some bigger materials, like 4x4s and 2x8s. In this video, you're going to see a lot of 2 by 4s being used. So anyways, let's get started with getting your 2 by 4s cut up first, and how you're going to need to cut them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do in order to cut up our 2 by 4s is get a cheap meter saw. Basically, all this is, is a meter saw that uh, it has a spinning blade and it cuts things straight in half. Um, I can also, uh, you know, do different types of cuts in terms of the angle that it cuts at. So that's good. I paid about $50 for this saw. This is basically a no-name saw. The reason I got it was very simple. I use it exclusively to cut 2x4s for my aquarium stands. I've built at least 20 or more stands using this saw alone and for 50 bucks, I couldn't go wrong. Uh, again, you don't have to get this. You can have your, your local hardware store cut it for you. Basically, to get started, <clears throat> I measured uh, where my first cut will be. This is a 96 inch long uh, 2x4, and I need a 48 inch long piece. So I just marked where I'm cutting with a pen, and that's where I'm going to cut it along. Just simply cut it straight down. Now, once I get that piece, in order to make sure all my pieces are going to be identical, I need three more of these. I'm not going to go ahead and measure each individual piece. What I'm going to do is take my pen and, uh, or pencil and put an X on the piece that I need. What that X means is that's my pattern piece. From now on, to make sure that all my other pieces are identical to it, 
Once I cut this, I can simply lay this piece on top of another 2x4 and mark it off where I need it to be cut. Saves you a lot of time and you don't have to keep measuring things out. Doing it that way, you're going to be off a little bit here and there. This ensures that you're always going to be on mark. Now, I've marked where I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to cut on the outside of that mark. The reason being is the, the pen mark is 48 inches. If I cut directly down it, I'm going to lose uh, a fraction of an inch. You know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but overall, it could cause me problems. So I'm going to cut on the outside of it, because I'm accounting for the thickness of the saw blade. So, now that we know how to cut up the 2x4s, uh, and, and a little tip on creating pattern pieces, I'm going to go ahead and cut up everything that I need, and we're going to move on to the next step. So there you have it guys, I got all my wood cut up, everything's ready to go, I'm going to start putting it together now. Um, don't let any of this confuse you just yet, I haven't told you what to cut, how long to cut it, or anything like that. But we're going we're gonna to discuss all that progressing through the video. So let's start out by uh, putting it together. Okay, so starting out we got the frame of the bottom of the stand. Basically this is how long the stand will be and this is the width. This is what the aquarium is going to be sitting on or it could be the bottom. But we need two of these. So what we have here and how I cut it was very simple. The length of the aquarium that I'm using is 48 inches long. It's also 36 inches wide. Uh, if, if this is your first aquarium, uh, you know, do-it-yourself stand, you should probably give yourself an extra inch. So in my case, if this is my first build, instead of making it 48 inches long, I'd make it 49 inches long, just to give myself some room to play with. So essentially with mine, I made it 48 inches long. That's the outside piece. The inside pieces are not 36 inches wide. The reason being is very, very simple. The 2x4s on the ends are giving it an extra width. A 2x4's width and, and uh, height is not really 2x4. It's more so 1.5 by 3.5. So if I put a 1.5 here and a 1.5 here, that gives me 3 extra inches. So the width of this piece really only needs to be 33 inches, which gives me a combined width of 36. So now I'm going to take my wood screws and, and drill two on each end. Two in here, two in there, two in the other ends. And they're going on top of each other. Uh, basically one and then the other inside of the, on the sides of the, uh, the frame here. I need two of these, so I've already cut them and they're ready to go. I'm going to screw them together and we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so now I'm ready to uh, move on to the next step. I've created two of these that I mentioned a second ago. A top and a bottom. Uh, these are pretty flimsy right now because they only have two screws on the ends here. Now, the screws I'm using are number eights, two and a half inch wood screws. Um, the reason why I'm using two and a half inch is because the two by four is one and a half inches thick so it goes through the 2x4 and then another inch into the other piece of wood, which is typically what's needed. Now, I can take this piece off. We're, we're not going to be using that right now. Next thing I'm going to be doing is adding in, um, these are basically, uh, I call them guides. What that means is one of these is going to determine the height, overall height of the aquarium. Since I'm only going with a short aquarium, uh, stand. What I did was uh, determine that I would like to have a stand that's 28 inches tall. That's going to allow me to uh, fit it at the door if I ever need to. Basically it's going to end up being about 27 and a half inches tall. Now, so what I needed to do was cut four of these to the height of the tank. I also need to consider whether I'm putting plywood or styrofoam on top of it. Uh, so I have to take that into an account as well. But these are 27 inches long, and I've got four of them. These are going to go into each corner of the tank. You're going to be drilling through the side here, and then this side here. Two screws here, and two this way, uh, through this side. So two side by side, and two on top of each other. Um, and that's basically it. So I'm going to get all four on there, and then we're going to move to the next step. Okay, so now we've got the all four sub, uh, guides in place. As you can see, it's starting to look like a stand. Still a lot to do, though. 
Next step is simply putting the other top uh, brace on top of uh, on top of the uh, aquarium stand here. How we're going to do that is simple. We're just going to move this out of the way for a couple seconds here. We'll go ahead and grab the other frame, lay that down, and then simply put this inside. It should fit snugly. If it doesn't, you know, make it fit. Now, um, it's only not going in straight because I'm not putting it down straight down. I put it in on an angle. So there we have it. Looking like a stand right now. Um, not really. Still lots to do. I'm going to go ahead and screw each end in here. Now we're going to move on to the next step. Basically, I'm uh, screwing it in the same manner as I did up here. So two side by side here, and then two screws uh, on top of each other on the other side, connecting um, the outside frame to the guides. Making sure that uh, your floor that you're building your sand on is level is extremely important, so you can have a nice flat surface on top. So far, so good. So I'm going to get ahead and uh, start screwing everything together. Um, you'll notice I'm not using wood glue to glue this stand together. Wood glue for a stand like this, in my opinion, is a waste of time. Glue's not going to hold your tank together when you're putting, you know, several thousand pounds on top of it. I think it's a waste of uh, money and, uh, you know, a waste of time and makes a mess that is all completely unneeded. The screws are just basically holding it together and the wood's going to support the, uh, the tank. That's a personal opinion. Go ahead and use wood glue if you want. Anyways, moving on to the next step. Okay guys, so the stand is basically coming together light, uh, pretty nicely right now. Now, if I were to set an aquarium on top of this, all of the weight is not going to be on this uh, piece of wood here. It's going to be all on the screws because the tank is going to be sitting here. Especially if you have a glass tank with a bottom trim on it, which means all of that weight is going to be distributed around the perimeter of the aquarium, basically being put on here. Because of this, we can't just have the weight of the aquarium on the screws themselves. We need something to go between here and here. And that will take the full weight of the aquarium. So that's where two more pieces of wood for each corner is going to come into play. Um, basically, all we're doing is putting them in each corner. Like so. You know, they're going to be tight fits uh, because it's the exact measurements that I needed. So a rubber mallet banging them into place is going to be a good idea. And then we simply uh, screw them into place. Now for the 2x4s, where they should go is really simple. There's a crease right here. We need uh, the side 2x4 to cover it. Basically what that means is that the weight from both of these 2x4s is going to be distributed evenly along here instead of all this 2x4 on this one, all this on here. Basically it's going to increase the strength overall. So now what this will do is transfer all the weight from the aquarium to each one of these 2x4s. I'm going to be running two on each corner, so that gives me a total of eight of these 2x4s. So eight 2x4s are going to be holding up this tank. Now, this tank, uh, th th these uh, dimensions so far are good for a four foot tank. I'm going to show you uh, later on in the video on how to make these exact same plans for this uh, stand build to be applied to larger tanks as well. But first, let's get all the corners in place. So there you have it guys. Uh, the tank is just about done now. I've got all of the structural support in place. All this was was two 2x4s two again, um, cornered uh, and screwed together and uh, screwed into the, uh, the corners on all four corners. And this is essentially what's going to take all the weight of the aquarium. We still have some more bracing to do, uh, and these are equally important. Um, essentially, we're going to take a more of these uh, longer boards that go along the width of the aquarium. Just like that. Now, these are going to both get screwed into the sides and into the corners, allowing this to have more uh, strength if the aquarium decides to sway or get shoved a little bit. We're going to do one for each side on the top as well as the bottom. Now, that will basically uh, 
bring this almost to complete. Let's get these on and then I'll show you the last step. Okay guys, so that was basically it. The stand is finalized. Finalized for a glass aquarium with a bottom trim that basically uh, raises the glass off of the actual stand and all of that weight is put onto the trim of the aquarium, meaning that all of the weight will be around the perimeter of the tank. So you can basically go ahead and set your glass aquarium on top of this. If you want some reassurance that your aquarium is sitting on a flat and true surface, throw a sheet of plywood on top of this and call it done. Then you can move on to wrapping it or something like that. Now, I'm going to be using an acrylic tank and this stand isn't going to be cutting it. I'll tell you why. The acrylic tank has a full acrylic bottom. If I put it on this, it's going to sag right down the middle. So what I got to do is very simple. I've got to take more of these uh, long uh, 2x4s, the width of the tank, set them inside evenly, and screw them in place. This is going to ha help uh, distribute the weight a little bit better. And I'm going to put two here, one here. The bottom, I don't need them. Once those are in place, I'm also going to take a sheet of plywood and simply throw that right on top. Just like this. Okay? And then that's, you know, screw it down into place. Then I can put a sheet of styrofoam on top of that and put my acrylic tank down. And then, you know, I can move on to the rest of this tank. So let me go ahead and get all that together and then we'll move forward. So that was basically it. The stand is done, I can now add my aquarium to the top of it. Again, the plywood top is definitely optional, uh, but if you have a, a, uh, an acrylic aquarium, it's not optional. You, you need it, uh, especially the, uh, the supports that we added underneath of it. Now, you might be wondering what the total cost of this was. Well, it was actually very minimal. For example, the 2x4s cost me about $2 a piece. I used 9 of them. That's 18 bucks. The screws, I used 96 of them, I bought 100 of them for about 5 bucks. So we're at $23 there. And that's all, you know, essentially you're really going to need. If you're going to need to add the plywood top, I believe I paid 12 or 13 bucks for that. So we're not now at about $35 and I got a 150 gallon stand out of it. It's not a bad deal. It took me about 30-45 minutes to build it. If that, and that's me taking my time. So that was essentially it. If you need to make a bigger stand, this stand design will work for that as well. All you need to do is add more supports to the center if you're going to be going 5, 6, 7, 8 feet long. And what I mean by that is by doing the same thing you did on the corners and putting them in the middle. So you have a 2x4 on the outside, or I'm sorry, on the inside, connected to the inside of these 2x4s and then one in the middle that takes the weight of the aquarium. For a six foot tank, you're probably only going to need one in the middle. Seven and eight foot tanks, eight foot tanks, sorry, you're probably going to need two in the middle. This design is good for tanks up to 300 gallons at least. I know this because I built a 300 gallon stand for, for a 300 gallon aquarium. If you're going bigger than 300 gallons, you're going to want to take a look into two by eights and 4 by 4s to make your uh, aquarium stand. So that was it. I showed you guys exactly how to build it, how to cut it, everything you needed to know. We broke down the cost and uh, you know, showed you the exact blueprint of what you needed to know. If you have any questions or if you'd like to share some pictures of your do-it-yourself projects, make sure you check out DIYFishkeepers.com. In the next video, we're going to complete the stand. We're going to finish wrapping it, adding the doors and hardware, etc. I'm also going to be making a canopy for this stand that the, it will sit on top of the aquarium. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So we'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.